Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here with TGN, and welcome to the early, early, it's like the third beta here in Elite Dangerous. Now, I've covered a lot of Star Citizen, and I've been told multiple times, you got to get in some Elite Dangerous Time Shack, you got to try it out, and I'm finally giving it a go. Uh, I've been excited for this title, actually really excited for this one, because it's going to be coming out almost a year before Star Citizen. Now, they just released the newest beta build, and they opened up the map to just un godly levels like the size is just huge we're gonna dive into that in just a second but uh, i have to say the the immersive aspect of this game is freaking fantastic you know what let's let's go ahead and look into the navigation menu here i'm actually using a joystick and a throttle control and you can see how quickly i can uh, i can navigate this and i've only been playing for a couple of hours kind of getting a handle on it uh, it's definitely pretty legit. But let's go into the galaxy map, and you guys are going to see what the most impressive feature of this game is in the beta, and I think when it releases as well. This right here, all these sectors can be visited inside this weird pill-looking shape here. Let me zoom in. All these sectors. There's over 500, I think 550 in right now. Some of them haven't actually been explored, but you can go and check them out. There's going to be 400 billion places you can explore on this map when the game comes out. So it says on their on their website. Now I assume a lot of that's going to be like randomly generated. Um, this of course not going to be. Uh, Star Citizen is talking about how they're kind of handcrafting each solar system. This is going the opposite direction, and they're going to have it. I guess it's some type of generation system making because that's way too many star systems. So obviously they're going to be randomly generated. But ah oh, man, it's so cool. And they've actually got real stars in here. Oh, uh, so badass. But anyways. Let's, let's get into what makes this special and why I'm having so much fun with it, and that is the, the immersive aspect. So before we even take off, we'll go ahead, we'll look around the cockpit a little bit. You guys can see just the level of detail. Now, like I said, I was using a joystick and a throttle control, and this is... Oh, we haven't actually clicked launch yet. So let's go ahead and launch. Center this. Launch. Now, nah, there we go. So when I go to launch... And before I launch, we'll look at the controls here. I've actually seen, you got the throttle control. I'm moving these and testing my flight controls one to one with what I'm actually doing. Roll left, roll right. And as a, a certified, I'm actually a certified pilot. I love this aspect. I mean, this is crazy immersive to me. We'll throttle up, go ahead and throttle down. And that's the best thing about this. And I think what Star Citizen is trying to do too is they're sticking to a crazy level of immersion. Pitch up, pitch down, check all my control surfaces. All right, thrusting left, thrusting right, which is so, so ridiculous. Because the one thing, and I'll show you guys how the navigation works, the one thing that's really badass in this is um, that you never leave the, the cockpit view. There's no loading screen, there's no like wormhole jumping and then you're, boom, you're in a star sector. You actually stay in cockpit, you have full control over your head, uh, you can look at your navigation menus while everything's going on. Uh, and it gives you a sense of never being taken out of the universe when you play, is really what it does. And it's, ah, it's so fantastic. So as you see, we're, we're taking off. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but there was actually a big fan there where you could Imagine them blowing in all the oxygen, and when you dock, you actually see them vent all the oxygen in the hangar bay. All right, so we're now released. I've got actual full control of the vessel. We'll use our uh, our bottom thrusters there to get off the dock. We'll start moving away and go into one of my menus here. And it's got this cool holographic display that they've got going on. I actually like the menu system so far in this better than Star Citizen. Of course, this is almost released, so it's been worked on way longer than Star Citizen's menu system has, but we're going to go ahead and bring up our landing gear, retract that, you'll notice we'll get a big speed boost, spooshed, and we'll speed up here, put a little bit more power into engine so we get a lot of speed. Uh, in the newest patch, and I started playing just before this patch went live, there's another, another aircraft or another spaceship, they added in some new stations. And the stations oh, have a level of detail that is absolutely fantastic. Is that a bunch of wreckage there? I didn't see that last time. Let's, let's slow down. Yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of wreckage, like there was an accident or something. Pretty cool. Or you actually have to land these when you request docking permission, and I'll show that. Um, you have to find your docking bay. And you'll actually see the level of detail on the space station itself. But let's go ahead and burn away, and I'll show you guys how navigation works. I showed you how big the map is, but now how do you get around in system? Well, to go around in system, first thing you've got to do is, if you look on the bottom right-hand corner, you see mass locked. 
So I'm locked right now. I can't actually jump away. Not until I get away from a large uh, gravitational field. So the station, uh, not a very large mass area to it, but the planet, yeah, I had to get away from it. So now we're way far enough. I'll hit uh, slow down, show you guys how this works. We'll hit J. We're charging up our hyperdrive, I guess. I don't know what they're using in this. I haven't actually read too much, read too much of the lore, but we're gonna speed up now, and we're gonna begin the jump procedure. Two, one. So one of the coolest aspects of this, and I hope Star Citizen kind of takes a, a few notes from them. We'll head over to the star is the fact that I'm actually navigating. I'm not just jumping from planet to planet. I'm actually in a, it's like a pseudo over map where I can see with the last patch, I can actually see other people running around. I can see unidentified sensor pickups that I can fly to and then jump out of this uh, uh, hyperspace, whatever you wanna call it. And then engage in whatever's going on, whether it be a battle or I'm gonna scan a wreckage. So there's that element of exploration, of learning how to navigate. In the bottom left hand corner, you'll see I've got distance and speed to target. Uh, that's actually the target behind me. Let's see if we just target the sun here. What we wanna do, actually, we'll get close enough to the sun, we'll find a beacon, then I'll try to find us a fight. So I can show how the combat works. But you get the sense of learning how to navigate, learning when to come out of hyperspace. Because one of the things that I first did in this, when I first got into this jump drive, was I was heading toward, it was a planet of some kind, and I was gonna come out of hyperspace and it says, you know, you need to slow down to safely jump out of hyperspace. And I said, eh, I'm not gonna slow down. What's the worst that could happen? And when I got closer to the planet, the gravity grabbed me, and instead of when I throttled down slowing down, I accelerated even faster and blasted past it. So I slammed the, uh, the J key, which is the button to get out of hyperspace, and found myself doing an emergency drop out of warp type deal, where the ship started spinning out of control, and I actually took hull damage from the, uh, the torque, the stress, on the hull of the ship. So. It's like, that is really cool. I was really excited about that because that has all kinds of possibilities when it comes to fleets and pilots knowing what they're doing and being able to jump out of hyperspace on a dime. And then what happens when like two fleets come at each other and interdicting people. And there's a lot of cool gameplay mechanics that could come out of that system. All right, what do we got here? We got a couple of planets out here. Let's check our, our contacts list. We've actually got a Sidewinder. I'm gonna lock on him. I haven't tried to interdict anyone yet. I've got an unidentified signal source dead ahead. I say we jump out and we take a look around. See what's going on. So you can see the uh, the idea. We'll do an emergency dropout so you guys can see what it looks like. And I probably overshot it too. And the sound design is so good. I mean, the engines actually sound different when I bring the engine power down and we speed up. You'll actually hear. I don't see anything on my scope, so I must have overshot it. But you actually hear, I'm gonna put power to it. You'll hear the change in the engine. That wasn't a big change, they didn't go from almost zero to nothing, but, and then here's the booster. Everything's got a lot of bass to it. Like it sounds like I've got a ton of engines just strapped to the back. I mean, this is the starter ship, so you know, you're not getting a lot of speed out of it. All right, let's get back into, and to jump. I wanted to go to the nav beacon, because last time I was there, there was a couple of wanted people we can get into a fight, but uh, let's just lock that destination and start charging up our jump drive again. We'll cruise the sector. So what are you gonna be able to do in this? Well, it's got a single player, but it's not, like Star Citizen's got the big campaign coming out, which is Squadron 42. Let's bring her around and see what we've got over here. Uh, but this isn't going to have really a campaign to it. It is going to have a multiplayer aspect, which the beta already has in all these systems. You can jump on and play online. The biggest complaint I have with the multiplayer as of right now is you can't just pick and choose what server you're on. It automatically assigns you to a server. Let's see what we got over here. Ah, we'll go that direction, see if we pick anything up. You can't pick a server, so when I'm trying to play with people that are in the, the North American continent, it's auto-putting me, or play people in the European continent, and I'm in North America, I can't get into their server. So a good portion of the people that I was planning on playing with for doing some videos and some spotlights, um, not gonna happen, because I can't actually get into their servers. So we weren't able to meet up. Uh, and you can't do like a group thing, so there's lots of instancing going on in this game when you play the multiplayer. 
And since there's no group system put into the beta as of now, I'm sure there will be, uh, you can't jump in with your friends very easily. It's the issue that we've been having. Uh, let's see, contacts. There's a couple of haulers over here. There's missions that you can take right now. I had a mission to kill a couple of war fighting ships, uh, some military escort vessels. I've gotten transport missions that you'd expect. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. They've added a few new ships into the game. There's some fairly large ones. Uh, one was the size of like a Krillian Corvette, if you know Star Wars ships. Uh, small Corvette class, still substantially bigger than what I'm in right now. All right, we're coming up to Randon 5. Let's see what's over here. Picking up a couple of contacts. Uh, before this patch, you couldn't actually see people in warp, and now you can, which is infinitely cooler. And I'm sure there's going to be a way to like interdict them and knock them out of warp at some point. Making it a bit more fun for pirates. We've got an unidentified signal. So in the bottom left-hand corner right now, you see I'm about 110 light seconds out. I'll be there in about 20 seconds. If I don't slow down, though, I'm going to miss it. And the bottom left-hand corner actually tells you, here's your distance, here's your speed, and it wants you to correct. Not close enough yet. You have to correct for your speed versus how far away you are, or you'll overshoot the target, so. Kinda neat. Sadly, they're not gonna have um, ships where you crewed by multiple people, like Star Citizen's gonna have once it finally comes out. At least not right away. Some of the development stuff they're talking about for this sounds really, really cool, though. All right, six seconds till we arrive. The six seconds isn't actually changing, though, so... Let's go ahead and slow down. Five light seconds out. And we'll get into a fight. I'm actually picking up quite a few things around me now. One light second out, four seconds to go. I gotta slow down, or we're gonna do an emergency dropout. I'm gonna overshoot. Yeah, probably gonna overshoot her again. Notice how I'm speeding up. That's all right. We'll just bring her around. Also a good way to slow down. Identified signal source. That's not the same one. On the left-hand side of my radar, there's actually a, uh, a directional beacon. You can line yourself up to whatever it is you have locked on, which is infinitely useful. I found it. All right, now we're slowed down to the proper speed. I can actually come in. So you see how navigation, the more you play, the better you get at it. I'm not all that great at it. I've overshot my targets many, many times. Safe to engage. And they've changed the minimum distance that you jump out of hyperspace since the last time I played, because it was way out, and then you had to fly into the station or whatever you're looking for. What do we got? We got an anaconda. Anaconda could probably kick the ever-living crap out of me, but that could be fun. Let's get into a fight. So I'm gonna turn on my weapon systems. And you actually have hard points that deploy. Let me slow down so I get a better turn radius. Weapons are deployed. Let's see his trails. He's actually already firing at me, and good god, that was close. I think he was firing at me. What are you doing? Oh, crap. Lower my thrusters. He's big and slow, but he has a rear cannon. He's an elite, so this is the hardest of NPCs in a damn good ship. So watch how quickly he's gonna just rock me. See if we can actually get away after we start a fight. But you at least get to see some of the uh, the combat. Good grief, he's lighting me up. Shields are still fine, though. He's shooting missiles at me. Oh, there goes my shields. So we're gonna bring in the hard points. We're gonna charge up the drive. Oh, but since I'm in a fight, it takes longer for the hyperdrive to actually charge up. And the closer you are to other ships, we're gonna put all power to engines. We're gonna hit our boosters. We're trying to get away. Now my my shield right now is recharging as we go. I can put some points in. Oh shit! Missile! 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 Oh! And we jumped. Now I don't think they're able to pursue just yet? I don't believe they are. If they are, I'm gonna be in trouble. Since you can't interdict anyways, they won't be able to knock me out of this hyperspace mode. But we'll bring it into... see if we can find one. We'll bring it into one of the big stations and show you guys what that looks like. And go ahead and show you how docking works in this and how ridiculous they are going to the level of immersion for this game, so. Let's just gun it. 
People like to compare this to Star Citizen a lot, though. You gotta bear in mind that game doesn't come out, and I do it too. I definitely do it too, because that's what I know. But this, this is all about to come out really soon, and Star Citizen actually doesn't come out for over a year. So there's no reason why, if you're a Space Sim fan, it's not like we get a lot of Space Sims coming out all the time, uh, to play this one, and then buy Star Citizen when it comes out, and play the ones that you want to play. That's how I'm going to be doing it, because this is just too much fun to play. As soon as they fix the server issues, that's the big deal. Now, of course, you can go around and do your trading. You can buy a hauler in this. You can uh, do bounty hunting. You can be a pirate. You can fight the wars that are going on. There's three big factions that I'm aware of in the universe right now. There's the Empire. There's the, uh, the Federation. And I want to say the Alliance, which is kind of like the loose collection of worlds out on the rim, I guess. All seems pretty cool. I do like that you can jump between the single player, the multiplayer, and then like a group server, sort of, uh, on the fly, and play with the same ship, the same character as of right now. And they did just wipe the servers though, so nobody's got any cash. When they released, we got 30 seconds till we arrive. Let's gun it a little more. And look around the cockpit some, because that's one of the most detailed cockpits. And I like that the controls are one-to-one. -one. This is something that the uh, the current setup for Star Citizen just hasn't gotten down yet. When you move the controls, it's kind of wonky. I'm sure that'll be straightened out eventually, though. We're going to start slowing down now, because as you guys know, I'm going to overshoot like crazy. Oops, I changed my target. Let's go ahead, target lock the city. Seven seconds. And get ready to jump out of hyperspace. And this is something in a fleet fight you'd want to like organize with your fleet and be like, alright guys, we arrive in six seconds, prepare to jump out. And then you could count it down, you get ready to come in, and if somebody screws it up, that could put you in a really bad tactical position. And that's kind of the stuff that I'm really excited for in this. Almost safe to jump out. This should, at least it was, one of the big cities, one of the big stations. It looks like a giant cube. They might have changed it, though. High conflict zone. Oh, man, I have to check that out. As I understand it, those are, like, areas where fights are going on right now. Uh, if it's a high conflict zone, it's more difficult. There's more ships, and they're better armed. Uh, the low ones are a bit easier, and there are missions to go there and fight the military ships for the different factions. Uh, you just take them from the station, and I'll show the station menu in just a second. Let's get a little closer. Tap that throttle. Tap it up a little more. And we're safe to jump out. And disengage. And there she is. All right, so coming into the station, once I get about five kilometers out, I'll be able to request docking clearance. Um, I should probably find the dock on this. The quickest way to find the dock I found is to look for the sections that aren't spinning as much. Six kilometers out, this is a big station. And go ahead and request docking from my contact list. Request granted. Alright, I've been cle cleared landing at pad 14. And don't screw up the pad you're on. They give you a certain amount of time, and if you're inside the station when that time number, that number counts down to zero, uh, the weapon systems in the station will come online and they'll blow you to hell. They don't give a damn. So we're gonna come back, come around it. See where we're sitting. I'm about to get slammed by this thing. Fly down the edge, have a little fun. Alright, pull away. Landing pad 14. Now, there's only one entrance to these space stations. See which way it's spinning. There it is. The quickest way to find it most of the time is look for the advertisements. They'll have big billboards set up outside it. And you'll normally see ships coming in and out depending on how busy it is, but... Alright, there we go. Now, there's no auto-docking system in this. You've got to do it yourself. I'm being scanned probably by an enforcement officer or a bounty hunter. Uh, might even be a player, because I am, I 
should be logged into the actual server. So let's go ahead and slow down and let this guy in first. For the bigger ships, some of the guys were telling me it's really hard to get the haulers through this gate because you don't have barely any clearance and there's no third person mode. Seriously, dude? Is that how we roll? We just sit? We sit at the door? God, the traffic. Get out of the way. I had a horn. Thank you. I'm kind of a jerk inside the docking bay, to be honest. Yep, there's our landing spot. Just gonna bring it around. And the quickest way to line up is line up with the numbers. So I just overshot and went totally over it. Don't forget to put your landing gear down, which I will do once I'm lined up a bit better. This should be my docking pad, docking pad 14. If you don't land at this right one, they will yell at you. And then they will threaten you with Warning. destruction. I am well aware, thank you very much. Let's get our landing gear down. There is a, uh, a button on the keyboard for it, but I like using the uh, the menu system. I think the menu system is really cool. Let's not blow a hole in this small space station. I'm actually already lined up. If you're blue, you're lined up, then you just bring her down. Docking successful. Locked. Engines disengaged. Fantastic. This station's spinning, so it does have gravity. I don't think this one's playing off the idea that you can make artificial gravity in the, uh, at least in the lore, so. Let's go ahead and enter the hangar. And it's so detailed. I can't wait till they launch. They add in some more space stations. And I'm kind of curious how the economy's gonna work. Can you like buy your own space station and start your own empire? How's it gonna work with the big organizations and player bases that are gonna wanna play this together? What kind of big goals would they have other than just blowing each other up? So, definitely cool. We'll jump into the, uh, the Starport services and we'll look at some of the stuff you can do. So there's an outfitting menu. You can see the ship here, all kinds of cool weapons. Armor and whatnot. Let's go back. Munitions, outfitting, shipyard where you buy your ships. They probably don't have any ships here. If they do, it's probably not very many. Contacts, the bulletin board is where you pick up missions and there's all kinds of missions. And there's now, as of the last patch, a, a news board, which is cool. You can actually get a little bit of the lore on what's going on, some of the updates. Hopefully it'll actually tie into the universe and the big events that happen, especially with players. Uh, that's the stuff people are gonna wanna read about. And this is how much money you got. And they're they're kind of divided up. Some I can do because some I can't because of the jump drive. Like this one's got a 7.75 light year jump distance. This ship is not capable of that. Just can't do it. So, all right guys, that is my first kind of run through of Elite Dangerous, what you get for the beta. The beta is like 70 bucks right now, um, but this title will be coming out uh, relatively soon, at least compared to all the other big space sims that are on the way. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more of this title, let me know in the comments below. I'm really enjoying it. I wanna get some cooperative action going on on this. So, all right, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.